and thank you for joining me on the show today. This is The Now Talks, a collection of inspiring personal stories and leadership lessons from some of the world's most iconic leaders. It is the weekly podcast for women in leadership brought to you by Nations of Women. My name is Dr. Tina Alton, and I'm your host for today and the coming weeks. I'm going to start the record. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you have joined us from. My name is Tina Alton. I'm the CEO and President here at Nations of Women. For those of you that don't know me, today I am privileged and delighted to bring my friend, my confidant. This gentleman has been a biggest cheer in my life, even sometimes at points where I was at my lowest. And just to see how much he believed in me and how much he cheered me really, really did so much for me. So I am ex- 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 excitedly delighted, Davy, that you said yes to being with us. It is a wonderful pleasure to have you. Thank you for being with us. Hello, Miss Tina. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me on. I'm very much looking forward to this. Likewise. Thank you as well. So, you know, to kick us off, I'd like you to just share a little bit about your journey really to becoming a leader. How has that journey been? Yeah. um, Well, it certainly hasn't been a straight line. Um, You know, the proverbial saying the fastest way from point A to point B is a straight line. Um, My path has been anything but that. Um, You know, globally now, people know me as the Lifestyle Lifeguard. That's my nickname. Everybody knows I'm a creator of the Seashore Lifestyle, C-S-U-R-E. And I have the privilege of serving as the managing director of a nonprofit, Empowered Fathers in Action. Um, But, you know, my path to get here, you know, leadership, a lot of people think that leadership is in titles or in roles. Um, It's not. Leadership boils down to choice and acceptance. And what I mean by that, to make this simple for the audience, is you have to accept failure and success as being one and the same. In my world, I use a lot of analogies that are beach-driven. They're both waves. Failures and success are both waves. So a lot of the struggles that I've gone through in my my life and my career, I call sin, self-inflicted nonsense. Um, A lot of poor choices that put me in positions to make better choices and making good choices has helped eliminate making more poor choices and leadership you know for me the way that i believe in being a leader is just being who you are and choosing to be okay with that you know what the world knows me as now they they see this highly energetic this this guy that just is out there supporting other people um like supporting amazing human beings like yourself um now that's a choice but leadership is not something you can do alone. Uh, Through all my failures and all my success, I've had mentors and and other people in my life. So, you know, for me, a lot of silly choices um, led me to not so silly choices. And every day is going to offer failure and success. Any entrepreneur, any leader, any business executive that tells you that every day is rainbows and sunshine, there's failure every day. It's just a matter of how do you choose to define that? Do you define that as a, as a stepping stone to success or do you allow that to define staying knocked down? And nowadays in society, especially our world that we live in, people are afraid to stand up. People are afraid to embrace leadership because they don't understand what leadership means to them. So what leadership means to Davy Williams could mean something different to Tina Alton, but what What I hope that I'm proof of is leading in your own way is what transcends other people to lead in their own way. And that's how you make the world a better place. That's how you build stronger leaders in your communities and your corporations. So that that's really, you know, my short and sweet version of how I went from being a dum dum to being able to embrace what I was put on this planet to be. Wow, that is amazing. And then one of the things you that's really stuck with me now is about how we have to 
you know, cheer others on, be a great source of support for others. And, and so I want you to kind of like, you know, help us, particularly as men. And I think when we think about women in leadership, there is this notion that, you know, the guys get it. They know how to do that for one another. Um, and that, you know, I, I, I mean, if you could, if you could just help us. So for our male audience, how can they become like supportive allies for women when it comes to leadership? Because I find that when women get in the boardroom, there's often this, you know, kind of like, hey, tussle, you know, like, how do you get in the boardroom kind of thing? But I, I see you as that, you know, that gentleman, that guy that you love to see other women at the table. You know, you love to, and you get one. And, and so how can you, how can the, how can more men be like Davy? Well, yeah, I think, you know, we've, we've come to a point in the world where, you know, and I'm saying this to the men and women, I want you to hear this as well. Um, I don't have any preference, whether it's a man or a woman that I'm sitting next to in a boardroom. I think that society has, we've become one of extremes. There's, there's a lack of balance. And so I think a lot of men have now taken the position of, you know, it's like a stab at your manhood to see women elevated. And I think women sometimes look at guys like, you know, we, men are trying to impede the gr- Look, at the end of the day, the only way that we're going to bring balance to the force there is for men and women to work together to work in unison. So for men, please understand that women have the exact same God-given rights that we do. And more often than not, and I speak from experience, and I know your husband, Peter, would agree with this if he's a smart husband, and I know he is, women are always smarter than we are, guys. Women always are the smartest ones in the room. And we need that. Women are very good at putting ego aside. Men We suck at that. But that, again, is what leadership is all about. We cannot sustain growth as a society or in business, in our corporations, in any culture without there being balance. So men, look at elevating women as an opportunity to bring balance. And women, as you continue to elevate yourselves, especially in the workforce, men, if they're being an adversary to you, then just ignore them like you would if they were a woman. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female or whatever your choice is. That's irrelevant. We have to be able to see past somebody's sex or somebody's race. We have to be able to see past that. What I look at in people is their intangible values. What are they bringing to the table? What are they doing to empower other people? Now, I'm not a woman, but I've been an avid supporter of nations of women from the get-go. We were talking about that before we went live. I've been an avid supporter of that. I manage a nonprofit that's focused on empowering men. But do you know what we understand at EFA, that nations of women understands? We are all in this together. We can't elevate one at the sacrifice of the other. So we need to stop treating it like that's what's happening. That's not what's happening. Women have suffered long enough and deserve things that guys have Now, guys it doesn't mean we're entitled to it i don't believe as a man i'm entitled to anything i don't believe that a woman is entitled to anything i believe we're all entitled to the same thing and we have to remember that man and woman boil down to one thing humanity that's the common thread amongst all of us we are all human beings and we all deserve respect transparency, and to be given the opportunity to be our authentic selves. And we cannot do that if we're relying strictly on men or relying strictly on women. We are all in this together. And that is something men need to get through their thick skulls. And women, believe me, when I know it's hard to see it like that because of the pressure that's put on you as a woman. But believe me when I tell you, not all men look at you as adversaries. I am well aware that women deserve more than what they've been given, but we have to work together to make sure that we keep that balance and sustain it. 
This is so good. I think, David, you're going to be the president, the world president of empowerment. I, I think <laughs> because you you really, really get it. You really get it in terms of, you know, it comes down to balance. It comes down to humanity. And there is there is no, you know, them or they. It, it, it always has to be we because that's where growth yep. becomes. We can't, we, we, we can't really change. We, we can't change the world or make the world a better place if we don't see, you know, the balance that, that is required. I really love that. Now, one of the things you also said, which I'm like, okay, this, this is a great definition, you know, sin, self-inflected non- nonsense. And uh, I talked about, you know, the, the mentors in your life help to shape, you know, some of those choices and some of those decisions. So uh, at what point in your life did you recognize that actually, you know what, I need a mentor in my life? And how did you, like practical ways that you went about finding your mentors? Yeah, so, you know, this one, this is a, this topic, mentorship, is something that is very near and dear to my heart personally. Um, So, Many years ago, um, you know, I had created the seashore and it wasn't the lifestyle concept. It was really, I had created it originally for businesses and it was a platform to help simplify the sales process and simplify the relationship between upper level management, mid level and lower level, like to everybody to treat everybody with dignity and respect and to give that to clients. And my business was doing great. My life was falling apart. I was making poor choices in my life and there was a lack of alignment. And, and then I figured out how to align them. And then that's when the seashore became a lifestyle concept. Now I was still at that point, I didn't have like a mentor, but people saw something in me in the professional speaking world and personal and professional development. Some, some high players, you know, high level players saw something in me. Well, what ended up happening to me first was I don't, where like my brand is the beach. I am the lifestyle lifeguard. So I, I don't wear suits. I'm not a suit guy. I'm not a, you know, ritzy ditzy Rolex three piece suit kind of dude. That's not how I roll. Um, what I noticed was people were wanting what I had to offer for their benefit, for their stage, for their audience. Now, granted I'm there to serve an audience, but I'm not serving the audience my way. I'm serving it for other people. And then you know, as I was ready to give up on my path to, you know what, like, I'm just not meant for this because I'm not going to let other people force me into being something I'm not. I don't believe that change is something that can be forced. I believe it's a byproduct of the process. I met a gentleman by the name of Chris Salem and Chris and I started this. We just, we had a conversation and there were no expectations. I was not expecting that to go anywhere or not go anywhere, but I was very honest with Chris about who I am and what I do and what I don't like. And I wasn't looking for a mentor. I was just looking for somebody that I could relate to. And that is how seven years ago, what started off as a simple conversation turned into me becoming Chris's protege he was the mentor. We became business partners. We're partners in the nonprofit. We're partners in for-profit work. And Chris really helped me understand things about myself that I thought I understood. So when you talk about when we talk about mentors and the type of mentor and role model that I try to be, I don't want you to be Davy. I don't want you to be anything other than what you deserve to be. So don't look at a mentor as somebody that can elevate your life and your career, because you're always going to be looking. There's always going to be somebody that can do more, right? Look for the people that align with your values, that understand you, that listen to relate to you and empathize with you, not to respond to you. And when you do that, that's how your circle of influence grows. So mentors are people that we all need in our lives. To this day, I rely on Chris for a lot of things, but I also rely, there are things that I rely on you for, Tina, and other people can rely on me. Mentorship is a two-way street. So a lot of people, when they're looking for guidance, like they're looking, but you have to be able to see what you have and see what you don't have. And when you just have a simple conversation with no expectations, the right people are going to be drawn. 
I am nothing without the mentors and the other people that I have in my life. There, you have, you've never gone to a beach and seen one lifeguard in one tower. There's always other lifeguards. So I look at who are people that complement my shoreline? Who are people that complement my process? Not what can they do for me or what can I do, but how do we complement one another? And that's how we amplify the level of service. That's how you and I got to have the bond that we have. Peter, your husband, who, you know, Peter and I, we've never shaken hands. But I have the utmost respect. Like I could call Peter tomorrow and just have a conversation because we respect and understand one another. And that's what mentorship is all about. Relatability, not accessibility, not how can they help me access something more. It's how can we relate? And when you have that relatability, you're not forcing anything. It just magic happens. It's organic. And that's a beautiful, powerful thing. Wow. Thank you. Wow. I mean, we we could go and go and go, but we, we've got, you know, just shy of a couple of minutes left in our time. And I've really been looking forward to ask you this question. If you look and think through your life as a, as a leader, and there was one thing that our listeners and our readers could, could, you know, learn from you, but most importantly for myself, what is the one thing I can learn from your life? simplify your thought process. I call it adopt the mentality so you can adapt the methodology and attract results. You don't have to chase any results. If you chase, you're looking. And if you're looking at one wave, you forget the ocean of opportunity in front of you. So simplify every aspect of your thought process as your foundation, and you will be able to build on that magical, wonderful, sustainable results. Simplify. Wow. Simplify. Wow. Simplify. Wow. Wow. That's like, that's so cool. Like, you know, if you keep looking one direction, you'd miss the next wave that's coming. Right. So, I mean, this has been, this has been just so refreshing for me in, in wrapping up, you know, it talked about um, leadership comes down to choices and acceptance and you, you can think of it as waves, right? If every wave could, could you, you can choose to, right above the wave where you can choose to get drowned by the wave, right? And again, accepting the fact that like you can't take the waves out of the sea. It is part of what makes it the sea. And so you have to accept some of the, you know, I would say the leadership tussle that comes with it. And, um, you know, again, the failure and success are both waves, right? Failure and success are both waves. And uh, you can, how, how you see it determines, I guess, how you come out of that, how you, how you would ride it. So if, if you see the wave as dangerous, you're going to miss, I would say the, I mean, I, I'm not a surfer, but when I look at videos, you know, they see the wave and they just go right through the eye of it and you can tell they're having so much fun. So again, it, I think it comes down to what the perspective of, okay, was this failure or is this something I can learn from, right? Because there is always a learning in every, every, every aspect of our life. Same as our success. I think that I was interviewing another gentleman who talked about how sometimes success can actually become a limitation because you've succeeded at this and that and that. So you kind of like, you know, don't see anything else or you keep striving in the same direction that in itself can be a limitation and this is my favorite one sin people don't sin okay self-inflicted nonsense i always say this like don't take no nonsense from anybody yourself included like don't take nonsense even from your own self because when we take nonsense from our own self that is the excuses that we give ourselves that is the Oh, I can't do this. That is the bad talk that we talk to ourselves and our mind is always listening, right? And the mentors, um, have a mentor in your life. If you don't have a mentor, I think you would be falling into what David calls sin. You'd be inflicting nonsense on your life. And the practical, the practical ways to find a mentor we've got here is, you know, find somebody that aligns with your values, somebody that complements 
what you're about, what you're called to do. And how do you know when it's time to find a mentor? You heard it from Davey. You've got to look at your life, at the areas that you are out of alignment of, right? And I do believe that we all know when you when one part of your life is out of alignment. So maybe you're a mom and, you know, your children or maybe your marriage, your relationship, your kids, your family, your business, your suppliers, whatever it is, there's almost different aspects of our life. And we all know when we are out of alignment. So if you begin to realize there is pieces of your life that are falling completely out of alignment, then that is a very good time and point in life to find the mentor. And Dave is giving us the key to find the mentor, find somebody that, you know, carries your values, somebody that aligns with what you are about. And it's he he or she is not somebody that forces you to, you've got to be this, you've got to do that, because change is a is change is never forced. Change is a product of the process. So as you allow yourself to go through the process, every process we go through has the potential to bring us change. And um you know, be who you deserve to be. Don't try to change to be who somebody wants or somebody thinks you have to be. You have to be who you have been called to be because you deserve to be you. So people, if there's one thing you can take away from our time, this is, you know, whether it's morning for you, afternoon for you, evening for you, it is this from Davy. You deserve to be who you're called to be. So don't be anything other than who you're called to be. Davey, thank you again for the gift of your time. I am just so thrilled. This has been great. I think we're going to come back, you know, have you back again to kind of like just really take us through the seashore concept. And I like I like the analogy you talked about the waves. So I think we're going to have you back so you can expand a little bit more about the waves and the shorelines. And the, I really love that. You know, I love you. I'm, I'm like, oh, Davey's coming. I'm excited. So thank you again for <laughs> saying yes and for being with us today. Thank you, Tina. It was, it was my pleasure. And just remember, everybody, leadership is a roller coaster. Our job isn't to be the roller coaster, it's to stay strapped in. Wow, that is amazing. And that's all for this week. You've been listening to Dr. Tina Alton with the Now Talks, the weekly podcast for women in leadership, brought to you by Nations of Women. All that remains is for me to say, have a fantastic week, stay safe, and reach out if you need any help now at nationsofwomen.com. Until next time, enjoy the pursuit of your potential. And remember, now is your time.